All right, so we're going to continue building off of the example that I, you know, use with the players shooting the free throws and his coach, you know, being suspicious about his free throw percentage really being 80%. You know, we're going to talk a little bit more about what p-values are. So formally, you'll see a definition, usually some, something like this in your textbook that says that the p-value is a probability computed, assuming that the null hypothesis your hoe is true. So it's a probability assuming that your null hypothesis is true that you would get a statistic as extreme or more extreme than the one you actually got in that direction. So for example, with the free throw example, the null hypothesis was that P is 0.8 and the alternative is that P is less than 0.8. So um, your, you know, your P value would be what are the chances that you would get a, a value of 0.64, which is what we got, you know, when you know we did that example of 0.64 or less, because that would be the one that would make sense to to argue against the free throw shooting percentage. It wouldn't make sense to, you know, if you said, oh, you said that, well, you said you or 80% free throw shooter and you thought you shot 90%. So you're a liar. Like that's not, that's not how the, you know, the real, real world works. You know, we wouldn't take that for him being a liar. We, so we have to always take context into account and think of like what you would hear if you never, if you, you know, if you watch law, you know, law and order or like, you know, any shows where they're talking about, you know, just like attorneys, you know, and the defendant and, you know, anything you, I'm probably seen on the news they always say that that in the, in the u.s at least we start off with saying that the, the defendant is innocent and they'll, until they're proven guilty so we assume that they're innocent and it's up to the lawyers and everyone you know everyone going you know the plaintiff and all that to, to to get enough credible evidence to say that that they are you know most likely guilty beyond a reasonable doubt so we start off with assuming the defendant is guilty, so we start off with assuming the null hypothesis is true. It's kind of similar to that whole concept. Now, the way we um, conclude about our null hypothesis based on the data that we get is we, we're either going to end up saying that we reject O, we reject our null hypothesis, or we fail to reject null hypothesis. So we reject O or we fail to reject O. So we don't say that HO is true. We don't say that HO is true. This basically is just saying that either we think it's not true or we don't have enough evidence to reasonably say that it's not true. So we're not in either case saying that it's true. In, e in either case, um, we're kind of, you know, being a little clever with our wording, so to speak. And you make sure you word it in these ways when you're doing your um, responses, especially on those free response AP statistics questions. It's very important and we're gonna go through some examples to make this clear. Now, the other thing we need to uh, go over before we get to the problem is understanding um, what we mean by statistical significance at some level alpha. So if you, uh, remember that like, um, that we have to decide at what percentage that we're gonna start to reject our null hypothesis or, you know, st and start believing that alternative is true. So we have to decide like, you know, if we start getting data that occurs less than 5% by chance, at the, at, if, it, if is 5%, is that gonna be our limit? Are we gonna um, go anything below 5%? We're gonna be like, okay, the null hypothesis, you're lying. The null hypothesis ain't true. You're not really a free. You're not really eight percent free throw shooter. The, the the chances of you getting uh sixty four percent is you know like one two percent because it's and we have to have a criteria. We have to have a borderline. So um typically in um like business or in mo in, in most you know uh an analysis is done in the real world like uh five percent is like our default value like. Um, just always know if you aren't told specifically what your alpha level is going to be, go with 5%. Um, the more serious 
the um, issue that you're dealing with, like if you're dealing with a medical procedure or like, you know, a drug that you're going to administer to patients, um, you probably want your p-value to be less. So like maybe 1% even or less than a percent because the, 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 um, the, if, if something were to go wrong, it's, it's very uh, damaging. Like the more damaging um, something is, if it were to go wrong, um, the lower you want your alpha level because we don't want to take a chance. Like we want to be, want to make sure that um, we can be, you know, 99.9, .9, it's like 99.99% correct, you know, like with like airplanes. And we want to make sure that the chances of all the gears are the chances of the engines failing so that the plane would stop, you know, flying is like less than one in a million. You know, we want it because it's very serious if, you know, it's very serious if, um, if, if you know, if, if the engines, you know, stop working. Anyways, so that's something else to keep in mind. And so officially, what we end up saying, or not we end up saying, but putting it all together, if we have a P value less than our alpha level, we say we reject HO, and we have convincing evidence for uh, the alternative hypothesis. If we have a p-value that's more than our alpha, we fail to reject ho, and we say there's not convincing evidence for ha. So we fail to reject the null hypothesis, there's not convincing evidence for the alternative. All right, so let's start going through an actual problem because this will all make much more sense. Okay, so let's look at this, uh, this scenario here. We got, um, we got Zenon and he's doing his second semester project in AP stats and he decides to investigate whether students at his school prefer name brand potato chips to generic potato chips. And so he randomly selects 50 students and had each student try both chips in a random order. Good for him, he, he, knows, he knows about how to conduct a experiment properly. Well, not experiment, but study, I guess. Um, overall, 32 of the 50 students, or 64% of them, say they prefer the name brand potato chips. And then Xenon performs a significance test using the hypotheses where Ho is that P is 0.5 versus the alternative that P is more than 0.5. And remember, P is gonna be the true proportion of students who prefer name brand potato chips. He gets a P value of 0.0239. So what do we say at these two alpha levels? What would the conclusion be at these two alpha levels? and focus more on the context. Remember here, I have it right here. If our, if our p-value is less than um, our, our alpha, we reject HO. If it's more than or equal to our alpha, we fail to reject HO. So if our alpha is 0.05 and our, our p-value was you know, 0.203, is it, is 0.0239, then our p-value is less than our alpha. So we're gonna reject ho. We reject null hypothesis, but what does that mean in context? What does that mean in the problem? We reject null hypothesis and we have convincing evidence for the alternative. So think for a second. So what does that mean? Here's convincing evidence that, dun, 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 dun. remember that the null hypothesis is that there is no preference. The alternative is that there is a preference. So if we're rejecting the null hypothesis, we're basically saying that we don't believe that there is no preference. In other words, we do believe that there is a preference. So we are gonna basically say we have strong enough or convincing enough evidence to say that students at the school prefer name brand potato chips compared to the generic. And then, for a p-value of 0.0, or for a p-value, the same p-value of 0.0239, but the alpha is 0.01, our p-value is not less than 1%. Since it's not less, we're gonna fail to reject it. We're gonna fail to reject ho, meaning that we don't have strong enough evidence to claim that the students at the school prefer name brand potato chips to the generic ones, because it didn't, you know, didn't go below our alpha level. So again, with like hospital studies, studies in the medical field, they're usually gonna have lower alpha levels because again, it's, it's, we, they don't wanna take a risk. They wanna take as little risk as possible. 
but in business, if they're trying to, if they're trying to um, see if, if people are going to buy a product or something like that, they're more, it's more, it's not a, again, you're not going to, you're not going to kill anybody, you know, really, um, if you lose out on some money. So always keep that in mind. All right, so I hope that helps.